4,000 years after the advent of reading and writing, a 12-year-old boy created a system for people who are blind to become literate. In this edition of Today in Technology, we visit the childhood home of Louis Braille in France to learn more about how he created this unique and time-tested method of reading. Then we head back to Microsoft, where we connect history to the present and learn what it means to develop technology that's accessible for all. People who are blind all over the world benefit every day because of what happened in this house. Can you tell us what makes it so special? Il a fallu attendre 4000 ans après pour que les aveugles aient enfin une écriture. Louis Braille, cette maison, il vivait dans cette maison avec toute sa famille, donc au 19e siècle. Il est le bienfaiteur des aveugles du monde entier. Can you describe what the Braille system is? Il va commencer, à, il a 12 ans, il va commencer à penser à un alphabet. Et puis toutes les lettres avec accent, et puis tous les chiffres, toutes les signes de ponctuation, ce système entre les doigts. Et là, il s'est dit, ça c'est la solution. C'est en 1825 que Louis Braille termine son système et l'officialise en éditant un premier livre qui va présenter son système d'écriture et de lecture. Braille a commencé à s'imposer. Braille va se, va se répandre comme ça dans tout le, dans tout le monde parce qu'il est comme nous, les voyants. On n'imagine pas le rang et l'importance de Louis Braille dans la vie et dans le cœur d'une personne aveugle. Dans leur histoire, dans leur humanité, il y a un avant et, et un après Louis Braille. How about I try it on you? Sure. All right. So let's try. Processing. 38-year-old woman with blonde hair looking happy. <laughs> Is it diplomatic or? Uh, totally. <laughs> People <laughs> love that. Completely accurate. So Seeing AI is a talking camera app. It speaks what it sees, and it harnesses the power of artificial intelligence to narrate the visual world in an auditory experience. This is designed for the blind and low vision community, but it's inclusive design, so there are more uses than we ever imagined. Can you read a greeting card? That's handwritten. We said, let's give it a try. Processing. Thank you for the flowers, I love you. Can you tell us a bit about the initial development phase? Every year in the company, we have an event called the Hackathon. It's a week long to work on any project that you desire. So we made a team, brainstormed on the problem. Our very first prototype was a MacGyver-like uh, cell phone duct taped to the head, which you could ask questions and it would look and speak to you. As you continue to work on this, what is it that motivates you? My grandfather, who was a professor, a lifelong educator, an avid reader, with old age, he would have a hard time recognizing my face. So that got me involved in this, met like-minded folks in the company. It has been a dream journey for us. So when we're developing products for people who are blind or visually impaired, what should we keep in mind? There's a common saying in the disability community, you shouldn't build anything for us without including us. And that's incredibly important because when that happens, you get a better outcome in terms of product functionality being something that people really value and use. When I think about Braille, I think it was one of the first tools that was created that helped people who were blind understand the broader world around them. It provided the, that first level of, of solid independence. And if you look at things like seeing AI, those are also tools that enable that independence that's so important for people of all kinds. It just makes my life more efficient. So we're always learning from the past. What will the future bring? The biggest program that just gets me jumping out of bed in the morning is AI for accessibility. This is a grant program to build technology for people with disabilities, leveraging AI solutions. It's a $25 million investment over the next five years. I just get so excited at the potential of what that will bring. We're continuing to innovate. We're continuing to look for opportunities for technology to help people with disabilities. We can build on Louis Braille's success, and as we do, we build on that legacy.